Welcome back, everybody. This is the second of our search types for arrays. This is known as the binary search or the dichromatic search, uh, like dichotomy. Uh, so it's one or the other. That's why it's called a binary search, actually. Uh, a binary search does not mean zero or one. Actually, it does. Uh, not in the traditional way that we think of it. Uh, but the binary here is either higher or lower. So since you have two um, choices, it's a binary choice. What essentially we're saying is the following. So before we even get into the code, let's just conceptualize what this means. Uh, a binary search requires the following things to be true. Number one, uh, it requires that all of the values in your array are in either... Um, highest to lowest or lowest to highest order. So that's something that needs to happen first. So uh, the example we have from you know our usual class student grade average uh, array would not work if we were simply reading it student one, student two, student three, student four, uh, because student one could have a 90, student two could have a 50, student three could have a 95. So those values aren't in order. Um, the podcast after this one is the bubble sort. Uh, you still need that piece before we get to being able to use a binary search. So again, um, the values we're going to presume are in order. Uh, for the ease of my <laughs> mental strain here, uh, I'm going to suggest that the values are from least to greatest because I'm going to do rudimentary math, which is extremely dangerous when you're just talking into a microphone, uh, standing up uh, or in front of people. So math is a very tough thing. Uh, so we have the elements on our array are in order. Next, what we need to know is the, the value of the lowest element, and we need to know the value of the highest element. Um, so do we really need to know as we're going through what those are? Not really. Our algorithm is actually going to take care of that for us. Um, so uh, it's going to be able to read the value that's stored in our array at index zero, uh, read the value of the index in our array that's the last, uh, and use that as a comparative measure. Uh, so let's presume uh, that we have um, 10 elements in our array. Uh, they, they, they span from uh, 10 to 100 in nice and easy 10-point intervals. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Uh, so those are the values in our 10-element array. So our least value uh, over on the left-hand side of the array is 10. Our greatest value over on the right-hand side of the array is 100. Um, so what do we need to do from here? From here, what we need is a number that we're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for element number or for the value rather 70. I don't necessarily know, um, algorithmically, I don't necessarily know what element number the value 70 is stored in. So I have to search for it. Now, I could certainly do a linear search here. I could start at element zero and keep going, right? So it checks zero, that's 10, no, keep going. It checks number one, that's not the 70 I'm looking for, keep going, and it would loop through seven times until we actually find the value 70 I'm looking for. Great, that, that certainly works. But the problem with that is um, we're not really looking at a particularly big data set, right? We only have 10 elements in our array. What happens if we have several hundred million uh, elements in our array? What happens if we're looking for a particular social security number? Uh, so I would have all of the social security numbers that have ever been issued from least, uh, so element from social security number 01 all the way up through whatever the infant that's born right now uh, is. Um, and I would have hundreds of millions of results in that array. That linear search could well take a very long time 
to complete. And really, when we're looking at data science, you know, several hundred million data elements might not be a lot. Uh, if we've got something like all of the potential search um, strings that we, we, we could have in something like Google, now you're looking at hundreds of billions. If we're looking for individual IDs in all of Facebook, now you're looking at tens of billions. And that operation is inefficient. Uh, we need a linear search because this makes things much, much, much more efficient. So let's go down the road of efficiency. If we look at page 96, uh, we have the code for the binary search of an array. Um, so first line, number one, set element found to false. So again, we're using a Boolean value here. Uh, to be able to drive whether or not we even need to continue traversing through our array. Um, we have our low element is always set to 1 uh, because, uh, again, uh, for now at least in the text, uh, the first element on, in all of our array examples are set to 1. Uh, so we know what our low element number is going to be. Um, next line 3 set high element to max number of elements what essentially that tells you is however many elements we have in the array uh, we're going to set the high element to the last one so for the example of our 10 element array that's going to be set to 10 uh, our do while loop uh, is going to control how often it is we need to traverse through our array uh, how many times it is we need to look through um, the first condition we have, uh, not element found. Uh, so as long as the variable element underscore found is false, keep going. Uh, the second thing we have to look for is, uh, is low element less than or equal to high element. Uh, sooner or later, uh, what essentially we're doing is we're taking our entire array, in this case, 10. Um, and rather than search through the whole thing, we're only ever going to search through half of it. Um, and we're going to see how that works. Um, so rather than searching through 10 elements, we're going to say, look, every time we come through our loop here, every time we come through our do while loop, what I want you to do is take the total number of elements and divide it by two. Um, so that's what line number one inside of your do while is doing index equals low element plus high element divided by two. So that's one plus 10 divided by two, which gets us 5.5, right? One plus 10 is 11 divided by two is five and a half. Remember, uh, the way that integer mathematics works is those numbers are simply truncated. So that 5.5 is really five. Uh, so then what we do is we go into our array and we look at the um, the value that's stored in element number five. So that's what our if statement here is doing. Uh, if input value, so uh, that's the... Um, that's what we're looking for. Uh, the input value is the search that we're doing. Uh, is equal to array at index. So we look at... Uh, student grade array at number five. If that is in fact 70, woohoo, we're done. Uh, otherwise, keep going. Uh, so that one's not good. That's 50 is not 70. We have to keep going. So what happens is if this is the binary piece, um, if the input value, so that's our search, is less than array index. So if 50 is less than 70, then high element is equal to index minus one. Uh, so essentially what that's saying is, um, hey, if I know that, um, and if you visualize the array, so the low numbers are on the left, the high numbers are on the right. Um, what this if statement is saying is, look, if the number I'm looking for is lower than the number I got, all I need to do to keep searching is look to the left-hand side. Um, the else piece to this is, okay, um, if the number I'm looking for is bigger than the number it is that I found in that array index, keep looking to the right and eliminate 50% of all of the values we have to look to. So this way, low element equals index plus one. So then the next time my loop comes through, my low element is six, my high element is 10, 
uh, and I take the average of those two. So 6 plus 10 equals, I'm going to wait a moment here, I let you answer, 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So this next time through my loop, I am going to check algorithmically, I'm going to check the value that's stored in index 8, 80. So is 80 greater than or less than 70? I'm waiting. It's less than, right? So this means I only have to check the left-hand side of the array, but this time my array is so much smaller. My array is in total the, the size of 6, 7, and 8. This is why binary searching is so great. Already after only two loops through my array, I have eliminated 70% of the total values it is that I have to look for. This time is, um, is um, the index or is the value I'm searching for uh, 70 less than or equal to 80? It's less than. So now I know I have to search the right or the left hand side of that array. So this time, the search that I have to do is only two elements large. It is um, element number seven and element number six. And this time when I go through my search, um, I actually get seven. Uh, as the, the, the index that it is that I'm searching for. So rather than having to go through um, with my linear search, seven iterations through my array, I've done it in three iterations with a linear search. Um, so if I was looking for a, uh, a social security number, I have hundreds of millions of those. Um, I can eliminate essentially, you know, 100 million, then 50 million, then 25 million, then 12 and a half million, and look at how quickly that number gets whittled down, 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 all the way down to we finally have exactly the number it is that I'm looking for. Um, we're going to see this as an example uh, in class where you can actually see it, see it. Uh, that'll be the hands on example you guys will run through uh, in the next class here. Um, but the linear search of an array is fantastic. Essentially, you always reduce by a factor of 50% the total number of array indices that you even need to look at every time you loop through. So you are saving a tremendous amount of computational time when you're doing these. Um, so the the... The actual pseudocode for this is on 96. Um, we're simply using um, either the, the max number of elements or um, that Boolean uh, element underscore found uh, to actually get through our array. And it is a fantastic way of just really by orders of magnitude um, reducing, reducing, reducing the amount of time it takes for you to search for something. Uh, so three searches through a 10 element array instead of seven searches through. Um, there is actually, there's a very horrible, um, piece of math that'll tell you, um, how many searches you'll probably have to go through, uh, in order to find that, but it's a scary looking piece of math. Uh, and I, I, I made a promise to you at the beginning of class that we would use non scary math. Um, so suffice it to say, I think for this, um, the linear search is a fantastic tool, uh, to be able to, traver uh, to traverse a, um, you know, uh, a very scalable to all the way up to hundreds of billions of individual data elements to find exactly the one that we want. And it's a tremendous uh, saver of actual computational overhead.